Today I'm sewing and sharing a simple tiered dress using McCall's 7948. There are a few views offered for this pattern, including the option for adding sleeves and or decorative trim. I've chosen view C today. For view C, in addition to your fabric, you will also need half inch wide single fold bias tape and one button. You can find this pattern at your local fabric store and online. I've left a link for you below so that you can check out all the details and sew it along with me. So cut out all your fabric, mark your notches, and let's get started. Apply interfacing to your front and back neck facing pieces. Now I'm going to use a tracing wheel and tracing paper to transfer my stitching line from my pattern piece to my back neck facing. Now place your front and back neck facings right sides together, match your shoulder seams and pin in place, and sew your shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press your seam allowances open and then we're going to take it to our serger and serge all around the entire outer edge of this facing. Place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together and pin your shoulder seams. Sew these seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I've gone ahead and serged both sides of these seams separately and pressed the seams open. Now I'm going to place my facing and my neckline right sides together and pin in place, matching my center front and my center back as well as my shoulder seams, and pin in place. Now that I have my facing pinned all around my neckline, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew all the way around with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once I'm coming around that neckline with my stitching, I'm going to pivot right where the seam allowance intersects that triangular stitching line. Then I'm going to follow the guide that I traced onto my fabric all the way down and then pivot all the way back up and then continue stitching the rest of the neckline with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. You can also place some extra pins in this area to stabilize the neck facing to the back fabric as you sew this triangle. Now that we have that neckline sewn, as well as that back triangle, take a pair of sharp scissors and you're going to slash right down the middle of this triangle to but not through the point of intersection of our stitching at the bottom of the triangle. Now I'm going to trim the seam allowance around the circle of the neckline by about half. And I'm going to clip close to the stitching at both of my corners. And lastly, I'm going to make a few small clips into the neckline just so when I turn the facing to the inside, my neckline lays nice and flat. I'm just going to make a few clips to the stitching line, but not through that stitching. And now we're ready to understitch this facing. Working from the wrong side of the fabric, I'm going to spread that facing so that I have access to the facing and this seam allowance. With that facing, press nicely along this seam. We're going to stitch all around the neckline, stitching this seam allowance to the facing about an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line, all the way around. And for the triangular opening along the back, do the same thing. We're going to open out that facing along that triangular opening, stitch that tiny seam allowance to that facing as far as we can. Your presser foot won't allow you to stitch all the way to the point, so just stitch as far as you can get. And the same goes for understitching into both of those top corners. You won't be able to reach all the way to the corners, so just stitch as far as you can. And now we can fully turn this facing to the inside, poke out those corners, and then give that entire neckline a really good press. And now the last step just to finish off this neckline after we've given it a good press, on the inside just make sure that that shoulder seam of your facing aligns perfectly with the shoulder seam of your blouse. And we're just going to use a needle and thread to tack that edge of the facing to the seam allowance of the blouse only. I'm just going to sew the edges of the facing to the seam allowance, not allowing my needle to exit the outside of the blouse just sewing through the seam allowance of the blouse. And I'm just going to do a few stitches here at the corners where they intersect. And repeat on the other side. 
and do the same thing at your opposite shoulder seam. Now place your front and back pieces right sides together and pin your side seams. Sew your side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then serge your seams to finish. Now place your front and back skirt pieces right sides together and pin your side seams. Sew these side seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then serge the seams to finish. Now we're going to sew basting stitches all around the top edges of the front and back pieces. Start your basting stitches using the longest stitch on your machine with about a half inch seam allowance, starting at one seam and stopping at the other seam, leaving thread tails on both sides so that you have threads to pull for gathering. And then start a new set of basting stitches on the other side of the seam, all the way across again to the seam, again leaving thread tails at the end. It's going to be easier to gather if we have these two separate rows of basting stitches, one for the back and one for the front, because then we're only gathering half the width at a time instead of trying to gather the entire top of the skirt. For your front and back ruffle pieces, you have three panels. Grab two of your panels and clip one of your seams. And open up that panel, grab your third ruffle piece, and place it right sides together with one of your other panels. Clip that side seam. So now two of our three seams are pinned in place. Now you can match up the two remaining sides that are not pinned to anything, place them right sides together, and clip that seam in place. And now we can take this whole ruffled skirt to our sewing machine and sew all three of the seams that we just pinned. Sew them each with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then serge each seam to finish. We're going to gather the top of this ruffled skirt portion the same way as we did for the main skirt portion. Sew our basting stitches from one seam to the other, leaving thread tails on both sides, and then starting a fresh row of stitches on the other side of that seam, and continuing along the top until we get to the next seam, and so on. So for the top of the ruffled skirt, you should have three separate sections of gathering stitches. Here is the bottom raw edge of my skirt front piece. On the bottom of this pattern piece, you have two circles indicating where to place the seams of your ruffles. I've marked those circles onto my fabric with chalk. So now I'm going to grab the gathered edge of my ruffled piece and place one of the seams right sides together with one of the markings on my front skirt piece and pin in place. And now I'm going to take the opposite seam of the same ruffled panel and I'm going to match it up with the other marking on the skirt front piece and pin in place. And for that third seam of our ruffled skirt portion, we're going to match that seam with the very center of the skirt back piece. Pin in place. Starting with that back skirt piece, I'm going to start pulling the gathering stitches of my ruffled panel until it fits the length of that skirt back piece from clip to clip. Once the gathers are distributed evenly, pin in place. Then I'm going to move on to the next set of pins and I'm going to gather between those sections until they fit and pin in place. Do this for all three of those gathering sections. Now that I have the entire ruffle skirt gathered and pinned to the main skirt, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way around and then I'm going to serge my seams to finish. Now we can start attaching the skirt to our bodice piece. I've marked the center bottoms of the front and back bodice pieces with pins, and I've also marked the centers of the tops of my front and back skirt pieces with pins as well. So I'm going to start by matching the center back of my skirt with the center back of my bodice and pinning in place. And then I can pin them together at their side seams. And lastly, pin them together at their center fronts. Now I'm going to start pulling the gathering stitches at the top of my skirt so that the gathers fit the bottom of the bodice in each quadrant and then pin in place. Continue gathering and pinning all the way around. So now that we have the skirt gathered and pinned to our bodice, go ahead and sew all the way around that waistline with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and serge the seams to finish just as we did to attach the ruffle to the skirt. Now it's time to apply our armhole binding. The pattern calls for a half inch single fold bias tape. 
and the folded creases that are inherently part of this bias tape are a quarter of an inch wide. Our seam allowance for the armhole is 5 eighths of an inch. We're going to place the raw edge of that bias tape 3 eighths of an inch away from the edge so that when we go to apply it, we can stitch right inside this crease all the way around so that we keep our seam allowance. Fold out one of the raw edges of your bias tape and then fold that short edge back by about a half an inch. Start applying the bias tape at the underarm seam and pin in place. Making sure that the distance between the raw edge of your blouse and the raw edge of your bias tape is 3 eighths of an inch. And pin in place. Continue pinning the binding all around the armhole 3 eighths of an inch away from the blouse edge. Then when you're back where you started, Allow the end of your bias tape to overlap this folded back portion that we started with by about half an inch, and then clip away the excess. And then pin that in place. And now I'm gonna take this armhole to my sewing machine and stitch in the crease of the bias tape all the way around the armhole. And once we have that bias tape stitched all around the armhole, now we can trim the seam allowance of the bodice armhole so that it's flush with the seam allowance of our bias tape. And then fold that bias tape along that seam, turning it to the inside of the dress, and pin in place all around the armhole. Now that I have that pinned in place and the remaining raw edge of my bias tape is still tucked underneath, I'm going to sew close to this folded edge of the bias tape on the inside of the garment all the way around to finish. And repeat all of those steps on the other side to finish your other armhole as well. And now to hem the bottom of the dress, I've taken it to the ironing board and pressed up the raw edge of the bottom by a quarter of an inch, and then once again an additional inch all the way around. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and edge stitch close to this upper fold all the way around. Now the very last step is to create a buttonhole with our thread and attach the button at the other side of the center back. To create my button loop with the thread, I'm going to poke my needle through the inside of the garment between the facing and the outer tip of my garment. So I'm going to place that needle right in between so that the needle exits right at that tip of my center back. And now the knot of my thread will be hidden inside the garment between the facing and the outside material. To establish my loop, I'm just going to use my button just to get an idea of how wide I want to make that button loop. So matching the edge of your button at the center top, place your needle right below the opposite end of that button. And catching just a tiny bit of that material where I measured the edge of the button, I'm going to put my needle through and pull that until I formed a loop here that's just big enough for that button to pass through. I'm gonna take my needle back to the top of that fabric and catch just a tiny bit of that center top and pull the needle through. And now you'll have two loops and you want your new loop to match exactly the length of that first loop you created. Now we can start reinforcing these loops. I'm going to place the needle through the loops and over the rest of the thread and just pull to tighten. And then pull that loop toward the top of your garment. And now I'm gonna continue sewing those loops all around the main loop from the top to the bottom. Each time putting the needle through the loop and over that main thread and pulling to tighten. So now I have this stable loop formed, and now I'm back at the base of my button loop. I'm going to poke that needle through the material again between the facing and the outer material. Then your threads again will be hidden on the inside of your garment, and then you can just knot that thread really well on the inside to finish. And now I have my button loop ready to go, and I can grab my button and sew it to the opposite top corner of the center back. And once that button is in place, you are all done with your dress. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration, and I'll see you in the next video.
Thank you.